In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dear the beloved in Christ, often in venerating the multitude of saints of the church, people forget to give Saint Anne the special veneration due her. The Hebrew word Anne signifies gracious or loving. God specially chose Saint Anne to raise his most perfect creation, the Blessed Virgin Mary, to the perfection of virtue. God has shown by many miracles how much he is honored by those who show special devotion to this saint. God filled Saint Anne with the rich treasury of grace, whereby he prepared her for the sublime dignity, privilege, and great honor to be not only the parent of the great mother of God, but also to be the grandmother of Jesus Christ. Saint John Damascene exclaimed, Blessed, thrice blessed art thou, O Saint Anne, who has received from God and bring forth the blessed child from whom proceeded Christ, the flower of life. We congratulate thee, O blessed Anne, in the dignity of being the mother of the blessed Virgin Mary, for thou hast brought forth our common hope. All pious lips bless thee in thy daughter. All languages glorify thy child. Worthy art thou above all praise, worthy of the praise of all who are redeemed, for thou hast given life to her who brought forth our Savior, Jesus Christ. My dearly beloved in Christ, God made St. Anne a worthy mother by adorning her with angelic purity. Without such purity, the miracle of Mary's immaculate conception could not have taken place in St. Anne's womb. St. Anne, being such a vessel of grace, instructed the Blessed Virgin Mary in a holy education in perfect innocence and sanctity. The pious care of her illustrious daughter became the great means of St. Anne's own sanctification and glory in the church. Baronius, a celebrated ecclesiastical writer, says, Veneration of St. Anne is as ancient as the church itself. In the East and in the West, she has been venerated from the beginning. St. John Damascene highly extolled her virtue and the Emperor Justinian I, about the year 550, built a church at Constantinople in honor of St. Anne. The apostles themselves brought her body from Palestine to Constantinople. Thereafter, some portions of her relics were dispersed in the West. Many saints practiced great devotion to St. Anne. Pope Gregory XIII and Pope Gregory XV especially encouraged devotion to her. Excluding the Blessed Virgin Mary and after St. Joseph, no saint has enjoyed such widespread veneration as St. Anne. Multiple churches and chapels have been built and dedicated to her. Many miracles have been attributed to her, including the miraculous discovery of her relics. According to an ancient and continuous tradition, the body of St. Anne was carried from Gaul, which is now France and Upper Italy, by Lazarus, Martha, and Mary Magdalene. Because of many persecutions and invasions by pagans, the bodies of St. Anne and many saints and martyrs were buried in underground church crypts in the city of Apta Julia. In 118, the first bishop of the city of Apta Julia, St. Aspicius, in order to protect the relics of St. Anne from desecration, buried the body even deeper in the subterranean chapel and concealed all approaches to it until all persecutions and invasions would cease. Invasions continued for centuries until the precise spot where St. Anne was buried became lost in obscurity. Peace did not come to Gaul until the end of the 8th century. Churches were rebuilt, and the priests and bishops of Apta Julia began to look for the exact spot where the remains of St. Anne had been walled up. Charlemagne himself came to have the church reconsecrated, but St. Anne's relics could not be found. A miracle, however, led to their discovery. The stories related by Charlemagne's notary and was included in Charlemagne's letter to Pope Adrian I. It narrated... As follows, among the young nobles who accompanied their parents on this occasion was John, a lad of 14, the son of Baron Casanova, deaf, dumb, and blind from birth. 
People near the boy in the sanctuary remarked that during the services he was carried away by some overpowering emotion. With rapt and upturned face, he seemed to be listening to voices from above. Presently, he moved toward the high altar, struck with his staff the steps leading up to it, and made signs that they should dig there. His persistence caused considerable disturbance amid the solemn rites. Neither the clergy nor the royal guards could quiet or restrain the youth. Charlemagne was deeply impressed. After Mass, he commanded that the excavation desired by the boy should be made. The altar steps were removed, and a door closed up with huge stones was revealed. This was the door of the ancient crypt in which St. Aspicius had been accustomed to celebrate the Holy Mass and feed his flock with the Holy Eucharist, the bread of life. Its size and adornments reminded one of the Roman catacombs. No sooner had this door been opened and the flight of stairs leading down from it disclosed than the blind boy rushed forward as if his eyes had been suddenly opened and led the way into this underground church. Charlemagne now held the boy's hand and gave orders to keep back the excited multitude. John made signs that they should search further and struck the wall of the crypt, indicating that what they sought lay below. On breaking down the wall, another and lower crypt was discovered at the end of a long and narrow corridor. As they came in view of this crypt, a bright light flashed upon the king and his assistants. They beheld in front of a wall in front of a walled recess a burning lamp which flooded the place with unearthly splendor. No sooner, however, the king and his courtier entered this place than the lamp went out. But more wonderful still, at that very moment the blind boy could see, speak and hear. The body of Saint Anne, mother of the Virgin Mary, mother of God, is in yonder recess, were his first words. The awestruck and king and his followers, at first dumb with amazement, gave vent to their emotion in words of praise and thanksgiving. The wall recess was thrown open, a sweet fragrance like that of oriental balm filled the air, and a casket of cypress wood was discovered, containing the body of Saint Anne wrapped round and round with folds of precious cloth. On the casket was the inscription, Here lies the body of Blessed Anne, Mother of the Virgin Mary. This letter of Charlemagne and the exact narrative of the discovery drawn up by one of his notaries are still in existence. After this, the Cathedral of App became the center of pilgrimage for Catholics from all parts of Gaul. As a result, part of St. Anne's relics were sent to different cathedrals throughout Europe and brought about a multitude of miracles in their wake. St. Anne's intercession brought about marvelous cures, both spiritual and temporal. The fact that St. Anne, according to the flesh, is the grandmother of Jesus Christ implies her powerful influence over her divine grandson, thus giving her great intercessory power. Veneration of Saint Anne is closely allied to the veneration of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Blessed Virgin appeared to one of her clients and said, Those who honor Saint Anne will obtain great aid in every need, especially at the hour of death. To another person, Mary revealed, The honor thou showest to my mother is doubly dear and pleasing to me. Saint Anne is a great model of virtue to all who are in the married state and charged with the education of children. Saint Anne obtains many priceless graces for all who venerate her, but gives special assistance to Christian mothers who choose her for their model and patroness. St. Anne preserves peace in married life, restores harmony and discord, and often wonderfully changes the bad dispositions of a husband or wife. She protects the birth of children in an extraordinary manner, bestows blessings that lighten the task of rearing children properly, brings wayward children back upon the right path, restores, obtains restoration to health for the mother when sick, preserves her precious life for her family, for her helpless children, and prevents the loss of husband and father. She revealed to St. Bridget that she would protect 
all those who live chastely and peacefully in the married state. Thus, St. Anne is a patroness of Christian mothers and a lesson to all parents whose primary duty is the holy education of their children. Sadly, especially in our times, we see parents who are solicitous about the physical and material needs of their children based on the values of the world, yet they're careless regarding provision for the virtuous upbringing of their children in which true happiness lies. Even an ancient heathen philosopher by the name of Cratus realized the sad state which was prevalent even in his time. He cried out with all his strength, Citizens, what is it you think of? You employ all your time in heaping up riches to leave to your children, yet take no care to cultivate their souls with virtue, as if an estate were more precious than themselves. In order to further inspire your devotion to St. Anne, I'll conclude with the words of the abbot Trithamius, who had extraordinary devotion to her. He wrote, St. Anne, by her intercession, dispels melancholy and evil desires. She also aids the poor, cures the sick, and comforts the sorrowful. She removes tribulations, and by her intercession obtains for her clients the grace to eradicate vice and implant virtue. She obtains light for the intellect, strength for the will, and affection for the heart. This powerful saint has preserved thousands from contagious diseases. Through her intercession, evil spirits have been expelled. From the, for the barren and the married state, she obtains children and heavenly, heavenly assistance and delivery. She inspires the despairing with trust in God's mercy and excites the tepid to zeal and fervor. Saint Anne has rescued many from imminent death. Yea, through her intercession, the dead have, in several instances, been restored to life. Those who worthily venerate St. Anne can obtain aid in every necessity through her mediation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.